It's a real honor and privilege to be here with you today. Thanks to Sven Tor for having me. Let me start first with a very personal story. Sustainability started in my home. My illiterate grandmother raised me in a very poor, humble, frugal, yet loving home in the beautiful city of Casablanca in Morocco. At that time, back then, we didn't have tap water. And when we got it, it was not always safe to drink, and I suffered from it. Back then, we were using natural products, plants. We were using, for example, henna to color our hair, to make tattoos. We were using uh, bicar to brush our teeth, bicarbonate. The little me at that time didn't know that uh, 50 years later, I will be the CEO of the first largest producer of bicarbonate in the world. Can you believe it? <laughs> Back then, we didn't have the luxury to waste. Thanks to education and hard work, I followed my passion, sciences, and I had the privilege and the honor to live and work in four continents. If humanity would live at the same standards as me, the little me in Morocco, we would need one Earth per year worth of resources. If humanity would live like me in Dubai, in Emirates, or in the United States of America, in Charlotte, North Carolina, we would need five Earth worth of resources. By the way, if humanity would live like you here in Norway, we would need four Earths. So this is not personal, and we have only one planet. When it comes to the chemical industry I represent here today, the hard to abet sector, I heard many times we are part of the problem. Of course we are part of the problem. No debate, no question. We are big emitters of greenhouse gas emissions, polluting, etc. But I would like to say it loud and clear today here, we are also part of the solution. Remember, and I am a chemist, so I'm a biased, Chemistry is the mother of all industries. Without it, there is no EV batteries. Without it, there is no blue hydrogen. Without it, there is no green hydrogen. Without it, there is no circularity, no connectivity. We need to reinvent chemistry. So the carbon is not the enemy. Yeah? The carbon is part of the Mendeleev table. But the source of it, the origin, is the challenge today. And more challenging even is our way of linear thinking, which has to be reimagined re and reinvented. When I joined uh, my company Solvi back in 2019, we were underperforming, both financially and sustainability-wise, believe it or not. We were, for example, cutting the greenhouse gas emissions by half of what Paris Accords required from us. And you know why? I call ourselves at that time 100 percenters, not moon shooters. We were thinking like traditional engineers, all right? We don't commit on something, we don't know how to do it. Nothing wrong with the engineers in the room. I'm also an engineer. I love you. <laughs> and I, I asked the team to raise the bar how we can go and just join Paris, just start it, even if we don't know how to do it. We joined Paris, and believe it or not, since 2019, we deliver twice Paris every year structurally. Every year. So the question is why and how? And the why is very simple. The why is because we became a purpose-driven organization. We start having an ambition. We set up objectives which were bigger than us. Our objectives were scaring us. Really, it was scary because it was big. We start raising the bar. We start like it's the motto here, being in our uncomfort zone. And we did that. And success called success. It starts to be contagious. 
and then we pledge, but we engage into carbon neutrality, which is unique for CUIM because I'm committing for my successors, right? It's very unique in a life. <coughs> it's gonna cost us two billion euros, right? Two billion euros, it's a big number. We have 30 years, even less, 25 years, let's say, but the cost of not doing it is higher than the cost of doing it, not of not doing it. On the how, I would like to give you three examples. One, we have now 60 projects around the world for our decarbonization, which are worth 2 million cars off the road every year. We are removing 2 million cars off the road every year. And with that, we, we need five times this to reach our decarbonization, five times. But we did one-fifth just in a few years. So I know that science will allow us to do more. We are decoaling our plants, exiting our plants from coal in Europe. Before we knew, since 2019, before we knew that there will be a Russian war coming in and, and you know, changing the, the equation of energy. And we are exiting coal by using your trash. We are building the largest boiler never built in France using your bin, your trash, so if you use a waste, it's not a waste anymore. We put internal carbon pricing in the company since 19. In 19, we put it at 50 euro a ton, when it was 25. In 2021, we put it at 100 when it was 50. People say, you are crazy. You are killing good projects. This is not capitalism. We are showing that this is a responsible capitalism, and we are winning today. So this is how we are doing this. And obviously, the company has never been as successful from record to record. I believe in sustainability and profitability is not in opposition. And my last end is not to leave anybody behind. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we are creating a sustainable shared value for all. Talk. Thank you. <laughs>